Close okay. the recording here. Hey, sexy. Do God's missions. There goes that. <laughs> and you are live. Yes, thanks, Steve. Hey, Chels. <gasps> hey, Steve. Maybe we're born with it. Maybe it's hard work, determination, challenging our limits, getting knocked down, getting back up, ignoring the doubters, investing in ourselves, asking for help, and never giving up. Maybe facts. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> Play that track, Dave, for years. Why? Chelsea. Oh my gosh, babe. <laughs> Happy four year anniversary. Happy four year anniversary to you too, babe. <laughs> I'm just gonna like not look at you for a second so I can type and let everyone on Facebook know where we're at in live world. Okay, that's fair. We're in the cloud. <laughs> we're taking a <laughs> ride on the internet, kids. <laughs> Oh my god! Fourth anniversary. We should have gotten each other. I have to say that's a that's a that was a much more in depth intro uh, than I thought. I thought you were just going for the uh, maybe she's born with it. Maybe it's quarantine. Um, yeah, no, no, no. But, but kudos. That was about getting things done. That was that was much more. Yeah, that was that was much that was much better. Right, and also maybe it's the touch up my appearance filter on Zoom. Thank you, Zoom, because. Your girl's face took a hit during quarantine. <laughs> Thank you guys all for checking us out. Thank you for hanging out with us for the last four years. Um, Stacy and I were trying to figure out how we could properly celebrate. We've been thinking about this for a while, actually, because this is our first anniversary that we're not next to each other. <laughs> and and <laughs> I miss you. Hopefully we're acknowledging the correct side. Um, <laughs> right. Otherwise, it's just, just me like, looking oh, no, at you know like what, Stacey, the you're side. Of the Stacey, you're acknowledging the correct side. I'm acknowledging the wrong side. <laughs> That's funny. I just wanted um, to hear you say it. I was kidding. <laughs> you're here. <laughs> right. But thank you, America, for hanging with us for four years. Thanks to Podcast Detroit. Thank Dave for thank even giving you. us this opportunity. Such We're a crazy moment. Your kids. Would yeah. you say? I said it's a whirlwind. I made, I can't do I the made dance. a decision this week to um, randomly listen to a couple of our older episodes. Oh gosh! Just for the sake of like, for the sake of good mems, as you. Like. <laughs> I forgot, a man. I haven't used mems in a min. <laughs> um, man, we have been through some stuff, Stace. Um, but I feel like, and Stacey agreed to this, so I just, we, we're just going to preface it with Stacey agreed to this. Uh, <laughs> um, also, if you're watching live, give us a, hey, give us a shout out, give us a whoop whoop, or, you know, I mean, if you want to type whoop whoop, then I know you really have my heart. <laughs> <laughs> and you enjoy the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, that's, that's my life right there. <laughs> Whoop, whoop. <laughs> <laughs> also, if you want to do whoop, there it is. We'll, they'll, we'll accept that answer as well. <laughs> we will. We will. I, I, yes. I, I, I just heard Good from answer. the judges. Good yes. answer. I yes. just heard from the judges. Fantastic. No physical challenges required. So <laughs> Right, because you got to keep six feet and we can't have too many people in the studio, a.k.a. my bedroom. <laughs> true. So true. Okay, so what we decided we were gonna do was um Stacy and I were gonna talk about sex. <laughs> Let's talk about, about sex. sex. <laughs> Let's talk about you and me. Let's talk about all the good things and bad things and that bad may things be. Oh, the nineties were good to us. <laughs> they sure were. Uh oh, where did I go? Okay, there we go. Um <laughs> Of course, my phone hasn't gone off all day. The second we start this, that's my third phone call that's just popped in. Absolutely. No, Got she on. is mine, America. It's our anniversary. <laughs> Turn your notifications. 
to talk unless it's for us. <laughs> so the way we figured that this could be funny or not funny, I mean, we're going to see. If it doesn't feel like it's working, maybe we don't do it. Um, I looked up some most common questions about sex from the internet. and Oh, God. <laughs> and I took away the ones that may offend Stacy's delicate nature. Uh, <laughs> Chelsea's a real one. Because I was like, I'm too scared. I'm like, all right, I guess I'll ruin my search history for the basis of our friendship. But Chelsea <laughs> totally took one for the team, per usual. I thank you. <laughs> so before, um, I'm just going to cite all of the websites that I got my answers from. So that way we've covered the bases. Nobody's mad about plagiarism. Um, first main site that I got a lot of the answers from is from teenvogue.com, an article okay. by Vera. Papasova from December 16th, 2015, um, NHS.com's Contraceptive Guide, uh, Future of Personal Health.com's article by Dr. Eve Epstein, The Nine Most Frequently Asked Sex Questions. Answer. Hey, I'll ask all of them. <laughs> <laughs> and Maxim.com's article, These Are the Ten Most Googled Sex Questions with the Answers You Need. Um, a lot of those questions we omitted, they would have made you friend. Which one Maxim, was that again? What was the Maxim, source again? Maxim.com. <laughs> oh, oh, girl, listen. But I always secretly wonder if I'll be on the cover someday, but, but like fully clothed, just to be like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, this is me. <laughs> right, well, okay, so me. we're going to start really general, and then, you know, really, I'm just excited. <laughs> You're going to say really gentle. <laughs> I mean, um, listen. I mean, listen. Okay, so the first question is, what is sex? What is sex? Mm -hmm. Um. Well, when I asked my mother in fifth grade, she said, yeah. "Stacy, wait, what are you?" You asked your mother what sex was in fifth grade? Sure did. Wow. Somebody was curious. I'm just saying, like, I can't keep hearing it. She said, what are you? I said, I'm a girl. She said, what do girls have? I said, a vagina. She said, what do boys have? I said, a penis. She said, technically, couldn't a penis fit into a vagina? I said, I guess. Oh, my gosh! <laughs> she said, it's disgusting, isn't it? Don't ever do it. That was the talk. <laughs> I don't. I genuinely, if my parents had a talk, I don't remember it, beyond me being called a virgin in fourth grade and thinking it was an insult, so I asked my dad if my entire family were virgins, like grandma, grandpa, uncles, aunts, like, I never asked him what it was, because I wanted to figure it out on my own, but I literally was just like, are you a virgin? Am I a virgin? Like, because it- Who are these virgins? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, according to uh, Dr. Carol Queen, this is the technical sex answer. Um, we're just going to giggle a lot. That's all this is. <laughs> um, I actually, I, I specifically chose this one because a lot of them answered this question, but I feel like this one actually speaks more towards your definition of sex. So I thought, Ooh. yeah. Okay. You know, I spent, yeah. A lot of experts might define sex in terms of intercourse or even in terms of physical things that two people can do together. And my definition includes those because I'm speaking as Dr. Queen now. Um, but it's broader. One reason for this is that people express their sexual feelings in so many different ways that in order to be inclusive, we have to be pretty far reaching. So I define sex as anything one or more people can do to evoke or satisfy erotic feelings. <laughs> <laughs> and we can define erotic as that which makes you feel sexual desire and or arousal. This definition of sex allows for masturbation, solo sex, erotic experiences that two people can share together, including oral, manual, and intercourse. Most sexual experiences involve some degree of genital stimulation, though not all do. Some people can feel sexually aroused and even orgasm without direct genital touch. Some people choose the, choose to differentiate between having sex and being sexual. The latter might not be as genitally focused, which is just like. <laughs> um, and might not include intercourse, but is way more sexy than just shaking hands. 
Wow. <laughs> so, I like oh, definition. okay. I like this definition because you and I have had this conversation before and I feel like I lost my virginity when I had sexual intercourse with penetration and that's not your opinion. Um, and this is more of a diverse saying that like really anything that you're doing that involves you being horny is, is sex. So... <laughs> Yeah, which I thought was interesting. Like, I had gotten that breakdown from a couple friends. I was like, oh, interesting. Because I just, you know, was used to the traditional norm. <laughs> All right. How are you feeling, Susie? Are you nervous? <laughs> I am okay. In full disclosure, at some point, my screen was frozen, so I missed part of it. <laughs> that's, that's fine. <laughs> it may have been one of the times I said genitals. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay. so just know it wasn't like, uh... And then like frozen. <laughs> no, it's funny. I love that our normal viewers are like, wait, why are we learning things? <laughs> um, I don't learn. You know why? Because it's four years in and we want to make sure everybody's educated. Also, I just want to see yes. the answers to some of these things. All right. A question number two of the uh, of okay. the most Googled questions about sex. How does someone have sex, Stacey? Oh, well, I feel as though if it were me having sex um, on my wedding night, it would be a man entering me. <laughs> God, this is awful, Chelsea. Um, on my wedding night, it would be my husband. That version of having sex would be him inserting his penis. <laughs> this is so hard, as it would be, um, inside of me. <laughs> um, with other people who talk about oral sex, then it would be like the man's mouth, like servicing the woman or the woman's mouth servicing the man. Um, those would be my personal versions of sex if it were to happen. But also, if I can be honest, like, because it was actually just this past week, there was a tweet talking about, like, um, if a guy does not, this is such a terrible conversation. Okay, we're going here. So it was saying sorry, if a guy dad. doesn't, hashtag, um, sorry, dad. exactly, hashtag, sorry, dad, hashtag, so, hashtag, sorry, bro, this is, we out here, for real. Um, Listen, turn it into saying, a drinking uh, game. Turn it into a drinking game. Every time you're, you're physically uncomfortable, just have a little sip. <laughs> I brought a big gulp. <laughs> so, uh, what was it? Oh, but it was a tweet saying that, you know, guys, if you're not going to go down a woman, please tell her instantly so she knows not to waste her time with you. I didn't realize it was that big of a thing, to be honest, because I feel as though when I'm married, as long as I'm getting like penis and vagina sex, then I wouldn't care about the oral piece of it. But I guess I wouldn't know until that happens. So, fun statistical fact that I learned today and I can't remember if I put in all my research so um it's actually like only like 20 percent of women achieve orgasm through penetrative sex mm. and the rest of women need direct clitoral which is usually done by oral that was things. so yeah. that's what I was gonna ask I'm like is it because they're missing like the clit the that was my thought yeah. process on it yeah. yes like the clit, the G spot, like the clit's easier to get to, but most women, even if you can hit the G spot, it doesn't do it for them. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Lord, hear my prayer. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> He's God over every area of my life. <laughs> um, the uh, Dr. Carol Queen basically said the same kind of thing, but she flat out says, it depends on what kind of sex you want to have. <laughs> oh. Um, and then it says, but if you're referring to intercourse, that's where one person inserts a body part into an orifice of another. <sighs> Come on, orifice. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I'm here. Um, and then it says that the, the first thing you need is a partner who wants to do the same to you. <laughs> oh. It's very important, you know, to have consent and, and find someone who's interested. <laughs> These are important things. Um, you don't need to read their mind. You can just ask. <laughs> Bim. 
for real. <laughs> I think I think in general, the biggest thing that anybody could learn from this is how important communication is with regards to sex. You can't be the girl who sits there and just quietly goes, maybe I'll figure it out. Men are not mind readers and they are very one-minded in that situation. So you got to talk and let them know what works. Listen, also, like communication is key for everything. So I feel like, especially right. in the bedroom, because- in the <laughs> get in the zone pleasure zone thanks auto zone um <laughs> maybe a car's your thing who knows but <laughs> they, have special, they have a special part in the back of the store for those kind of parts but <laughs> <laughs> but there was um wait do we need to take care of business or should we just like forego it because <laughs> forego it four years <laughs> uh, i don't think that we're planning on using any names but Okay, so cool. So there's a person um, who's saying that they knew a couple, the married couple that waited until they had sex to, they waited until they were married to have sex. And they told him, because he was like close with the two of them, like the one told him that it took like six months until they actually enjoyed sex. And I'm like, that's of the devil. <laughs> like, that sounds terrible. And they were just like, you know, they were trying to figure it out. I'm like, I bet you they didn't communicate. Like, right. how the heck, if I can't be a mind reader, how the heck is someone supposed to be a heart reader? I'm just saying. You no, know, that's very true. But also, even if you are very communicative, like, um, I like to describe sex as like special, especially sex with a, with a new partner as like if you were starting a video game, like you can't start at level 10, you will die. <laughs> you will explode and you will die. <laughs> like you have to start with level one with its tutorial. You have to learn the moves. You have to figure out how to scale the walls and you have to start with little bosses before you get to the big bosses. Like you just, <laughs> So, just think about are these bosses people? <laughs> <laughs> who, are, who are the bosses? <laughs> it's more like sexual positions. Let's go with that. Like, you're like, let's start yeah, with I one. I did not know that. When we get to the end, then when you get to the end of the level, you're going to up the level with a new position. Then, okay, let's, go, let's try and master this guy. And then we'll go to the next one. So, but you need to communicate because otherwise you're literally like somebody will really like doing what they're doing and it feels good to them they're gonna keep doing it like if you don't say hey <laughs> this feels crazy then <laughs> you gotta know right. so speaking of this feels crazy stacy what do you think sex feels like you know listen like i feel like the easy answer would be i don't know because <laughs> That's a cop out, and I need you to guess because the answer says, "What do you think?" <laughs> ah, what do I think? So, wow, man, Chels. <sighs> so, I, I feel as though okay. So, from my perspective, when people talk about sex, it's like the most intimate like experience you could have with someone else. So, I feel as though it just has to like blow your mind. So I feel like it should be equal parts, like just being like mind blown, but also physically. Like, I wonder if it's something that takes over your whole body. Like it's not just like, just strictly a physical thing, especially for me, if I'm waiting like until like preferably my husband to do that with, like it's someone that I love. It's not just some random dude that I used to like make out with and let touch my boobs in college hashtag sorry bro so <laughs> i feel like it's gotta be like a like a whole like just a whole level of stimulation um in terms of how it feels um i've heard what was it when we went to what was it a pure romance party and they had like the tingly lip balm and they're like yeah that's supposed to be for your nips i'm like oh god so <laughs> i'm wondering if there's like oh is it supposed to be like tingly and all that stuff and also since both parties have a release from it which i've heard it's common that people don't have it at the same time mm -hmm. uh, um, I feel like if you have, I, that's the part that intrigues me. Like when you have like that release, like, I feel like that would be a chain reaction into everything that you feel. It's just my guess. Oh yeah. No, no, no. I definitely had like maybe the third time I slept with this one guy. Sorry, dad. Um, he and I came at the same time. Oh, I liked him so much more. <laughs> ah! 
I think that we genuinely dated for like mutually. It was like that was the thing. It was like, oh my God, that never happens. And so wow. we, I, think we, I think we mutually like kept dating each other for at least another three months just based off that one moment. It was a good time. <laughs> that is fascinating. Again, things that I won't know until it happens, right. but just I've never thought about, I've never thought about until this moment if he like has his moment, like it taking an effect on me. Like me, I know I'm secretly a cocky person, like with certain things. And so I'm a lot of talk, let's be honest, but with certain He's things. very cocky for someone who's never had any talk. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, America, for you. <laughs> and so, like, I know, like, I figured, you know, of course, when I get my release, when that happens, I'd be like, yes, and I'd have all types of feelings. But to what you said, Chels, I never took into consideration when he has his moment, if I would even feel from that or benefit from it, besides, you're welcome. Like... <laughs> I will say most guys, most, not all, unfortunately, but most guys know that it's more difficult for women to relax and get to the point where they can achieve an orgasm. So oh. they're pretty concerned about us first and then, oh, wow. and then they'll worry about themselves because, because guys are, guys will pretty much come. That's, that's, that's their thing. Like it's very it's rare that a guy's like, yeah, I'm not going to finish. <laughs> like, <laughs> like at that point you're like okay that's usually like a medication thing then like beyond it's not like in general guys will finish it's yeah so in so when you meet your future husband yes he is going to take care of you first so it's not but like the interesting thing is let's say your husband's going down on you he gets you off you're all happy campers then you guys go to have sex but because you're already all like ramped up from amped up from your previous orgasm um your actual like G spot might be enlarged and then he'll hit the G spot and then you'll have another orgasm, but it's a G spot orgasm. So it's better. And that could happen because when yours happens, then you like grip, you grip it and on the inside, and then that can make him go and then you can do it at the same time. But it is kind of rare. Where's my notebook? <laughs> like, <these> are... <laughs> Where... <laughs> Where's <laughs> Wow. First of all, I don't remember having any sort of dialogue about like, what is it? Is it fifth grade, sixth grade when you're supposed to have like the talk? Like my mom pretty much took care of it with telling me what it was. But then I have friends that are vocal about, you know, oh, it is like amazing. And it's all this stuff. And it's like this, I never really knew the science of it. Well, what's interesting is that like, I think I was in eighth grade when my gym teacher made us watch the have a baby video. Like what? that's yeah, don't you remember? Okay, I'm gonna sound really offensive, but like, remember that gym teacher at Davis with the short blonde hair? Yeah, so I did was... not have her. I had the dude. Oh well, then you got off easy, girl, because like she dragged all of us into that little classroom right next to the gym that was in the same hallway as the band room. Yeah, we all had to sit there. We all had to sit in that room and watch. Like we had to watch three separate babies get born. Shut up! Insane. It was insane. And that, and then there was like a chart on the wall and it was like, this is how you, this is, this is how, where the sperm goes and how everything gets pregnant. And, and then she was like, and then this is what happens. She goes, so honestly, just like, remember that when some guys like, we don't need a condom. <laughs> I, th I genuinely think that was my sex talk. I don't think my parents ever went into it. I did yeah. find out maybe like a month or two ago that my dad told my brother like hey just make sure you use a condom i'm like that's it <laughs> that's all you guys <laughs> guys are different like a lot of guys don't even get although that gym class was guys and girls we were all in that room yeah i'm impressed like i'm i mean shit, wow how old were we then i was I, 13 so and i still remember it so that's got to say something girl <laughs> um the oh. number eight the number eight most googled question about sex is what causes sex dreams oh wow i don't know oh um have you ever had you a know sex dream? no but i've had three dreams about having a baby oh okay yeah 
like one time I was pregnant and then two of the other times I was like, like giving birth. I didn't feel anything in the dream, but like I was having a, like had the baby, like, wow. yeah, yeah. Um, and two of, two of them was with a person that I fooled around with in college, but I was just like, no, I'll never date you. <laughs> such a jerk and so I remember the first dream I found out was I was pregnant and he was high-fiving all of his friends going I got her pregnant I'm just sobbing like I don't want anything to do with you <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> and that was like the first dream and I was like full-on like pregnant and then the other dream I actually had his baby I'm like I'm having his baby <laughs> and uh oh, yeah no. it was ridiculous but in but no, I've never had a sex dream. Um, my guess would be, um, number one, my guess would be because I love food. Food, because you know, you hear of things that are like aphrodisiacs and stuff like that. So I'm wondering if there's a, I don't know, like maybe that is something to do with it, especially when you think of, I think it's like certain foods that cause like erectile dysfunction in men. And I'm wondering if there is a link with certain foods that you eat that make, you know, things better. I don't know, or worse, rather. That's I don't know. Good. And then also, and also just what you watch on TV. So I feel as though if I were to watch like a romantic movie with all of these love scenes and everything like that, I feel like it would affect my subconscious and I would have a dream about someone in that happening. I, I definitely feel like You're whatever so you. so smart, Stacey. <laughs> <laughs> so. Lori Lowenberg, professional dream analyst. Um, Ooh. She says there's dream two ways. Dream lover, come rescue me. Thank you, Mariah. <laughs> um, she says Our Mariah. 90s Mariah. Sorry. <laughs> You're fine. There's two ways to have sex dreams. Um, one is obsess about it and whom you'd like to do it with all day because literally it's built into your subconscious at that point. And we dream about things to work out our daily things. So you're not wrong there. Um, and then she said the second is um, to ovulate. So like two weeks <gasps> past the first day of your period, your actual natural body wants to get pregnant. We all, our bodies are made to want to get pregnant. So our, our flat out brain, our, it'll kick right in. And um, it, says, it says during ovulation, we tend to be a bit more randy. And this is precisely when you are more likely to have a sex dream. I mean, I've had sex dreams. I've definitely woken up and been pissed that my alarm went off. But <laughs> really? Yeah. I've, like, I've, oh, oh my gosh, yeah. And I've like, wake up and like, come on! That was a good one. Um, <laughs> come on. <laughs> hey, Stacey, why do you think I'm 13. <laughs> Did you hear me? No, I didn't. I, oh. I thought you said it feels good. Oh, well, I mean, it does. But my question is, why do you think sex feels good? <sighs> um, well, number one, I mean, doesn't the clit have like a bajillion nerve endings? Like it has like a ton of nerve endings, like, like 4,000 or something. Yeah. 4,000. Yeah. Something crazy. So there's that. And then you have the the infamous g-spot <laughs> so there's that but so number one like there's those like you were designed it's like god made us to have like pleasure like that was by design like it's made us that way it's science like I it's feel like, science That's it's science um I, really, I found a really but, technical answer to save you if you'd like <laughs> okay the old, the other part i was gonna say is that I wonder, because I don't know, obviously, but that's not something that gets touched all the time, you know? Like, I mean, right. throughout day to day, like, we're touching our faces, our ears, our hair, but that region does not get touched often. So right. I feel like because it is a rare occurrence in comparison to the rest of your body, it would make it, like, I feel like it would be more sensitive by design as well. Absolutely. I mean, just sending off like nerve receptors to your, to your brain. Yeah. Like, it's like, oh, that's not an area that gets attention. <laughs> right. Exactly. Like, oh my goodness. Like, like, the best way I could think to describe it is if you're wearing like a skirt and you didn't realize it was going to be a super chilly, windy day. And like, <laughs> 
and then like the wind just goes whoo <laughs> you're like oh jesus <laughs> man listen listen america i told you um <laughs> i'm a virgin with short labial folds because <laughs> what i got <laughs> Because when I got my first Brazilian and everything's just exposed down there and I took a shower and the shower hit it, I was like, oh my God, like, was not prepared, was not prepared. Because <laughs> um, that section does not get frequent. Right? Hey, Stacey, how do you put on a condom? Um, with two hands? Uh. <laughs> I mean, technically, yes. I'm going to save you from this one so that you're like, hold on. Oh, oh, okay. So I feel as though, like, I feel, what? I feel like you always see pictures with, like, bananas mm -hmm. with them on when it's like, okay, we're going to talk to kids about blah, blah, blah. So I imagine, number one, it comes in, like, a small thing. So, mm -hmm. but it's, like, kind of flat. So I feel like, um... I feel like you would put it here and then just kind of roll it down would be my guess. Look at you. Okay, so the only thing you're missing is that there's like a little pocket at the tip and you need to make sure that doesn't get filled with air because it needs to be filled with something else at the end. Um, oh, that makes sense. So, you, so when you put it on, you're supposed to pinch the tip and then roll it down. Pinch the tip, roll it down. Um, and then, because if there's air in there and actually the friction, it can actually cause the condom to tear. And then what, what, what were you doing? Wow. Yeah. So pinch the tip, make sure there's no air and then roll it down and then just make sure that, um, it's all the way down. Now my favorite is there's a woman, there's a woman in, oh God, I want to say it was fifth grade. She came into my elementary school and she talked to us about periods and all this stuff and then out of nowhere she pulled out a condom and mind you we're like what 10 what and I was that? like and we're like and she goes this is a condom just so you know this is something you'll need to see in your life and and then at the very end of her spiel she did the whole explanation and then she goes and if a man ever says it's too small I don't want to wear it and she took this tiny little condom and fit her entire arm in it So legitimately, it is not an excuse. Like, there's, nope. <laughs> so people say that it's too oh, small? Yeah. Guys want as much sensation as they can get. They don't have as many nerve endings as we do. So like, and most of them are on the tip. So if you have a condom with this little thing at the tip, they don't feel as much. They want to feel as much as possible. So they don't want to use condoms. But the best sex is safe sex. So you got to use a condom. And... Wow. So guys will constantly be like, oh, it's just it's so, I'm just, too, I'm just too big. It's just too tight. And don't, you don't want me to feel pain, do you? Yeah, no, you know what I, you know what I don't want? I don't want to feel pain when I'm pushing out your kid. Go ahead and- Took the thought out of my brain. <laughs> grab that stump before you pump, before you pump. So there is a phenomenal uh, meme that you should keep on your phone. Uh, there's a woman who was tired of guys trying to play that line. And she literally took a condom and pulled it up over her leg. My teacher, my fifth grade, she put it all the way over her arm. All the way over her arm. Like, yeah. There's actually, one, there's actually like a, a, a meme or a gif of a lady driving in a car. And she, with two hands, holds the condom out the window. And it blows up and it goes all the way back past the passenger window. Like, That's outstanding. The elasticity of a latex condom. No question. Oh, <laughs> so okay. Since I just, we're I here, thought I would chime in with that because you know. First of all, I've been waiting for you, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, I'm scared again. <laughs> um, so, um, do okay. So you said those are latex condoms because they do yeah. make condoms that are not made of latex, correct? Truth, yeah. True, They're, I couldn't um, tell you the same with like lambskin or any, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's not, it's the only reason really to use those because they're not as effective would be if someone has a latex allergy. Right. Yeah, because no, lambskin because... lamb does technically tend to be more porous and it is still a, um, uh, what's the, I, I can't think of the word because I'm brain cramping, um, but they don't, they're not as effective, but yeah. 
And like even condoms yeah. themselves are only 97% effective. So hello. You can still get pregnant. <laughs> right. Cause in Chelsea, when we were in seventh grade, there was a what we're in some class and we we're gonna do something with balloons. And the one girl said, Oh, like I might step back because I have a latex allergy. And the teacher said, Well, so much for safe sex. <laughs> <laughs> Now, fortunately, it was in between classes, so there was only like three people in the classroom, and it wasn't in front of a ton of people. But yeah. public school, man, public school. <laughs> See, someone would get fired for that shit today. Which yeah, is yeah. Like, of course, right today it would actually be over. We were Zoom, so yeah. Wow. Also, do the lambskin ones like do they cost more than the other ones? Probably. Interesting. I, I, I have not gone price comparison shopping in a while. I'm sorry. In general, I or think never. Not, <laughs> in general, I tend to go as long as they're not expired. <laughs> and, they're, and, and I'm usually. What? Usually, they expire? Yeah. I usually splurge for the, uh, the spermicide ones, too. Oh, so no, you know, joke. So that old running thing about, you know, the guy that always carried the condom in his wallet, yada, yada, yada. Like, that's actually a horrible idea. Um, because it, it keeps it near your body heat and it actually causes the latex to break down faster yeah. and all that stuff. They're actually, um, in like maybe 2010 or 11, they tried to get, um, uh, condoms to get shipped in temperature controlled trucks instead of general trucks because, yeah. um, because literally just the heat can actually break down the condoms in ship in shipping. And then it basically creates these microscopic holes that like a sperm's this big and the hole's this big and you can get 15 of those buggers through. What? Listen, I already knew I was gonna learn a ton, but holy moly, like. Hey, I just, no. remember, I just remember the good old days when safe sex meant, hey, my parents are gone for the weekend, come on over. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> twice. <laughs> uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> Wait, so I knew? Like when people say the phrase like it's hot as balls, like that derived from like a man's testicles have to be a certain temperature in order to produce sperm. But I never thought about um, like temperature in terms of condoms. Like they're only made for a specific temperature. I never would have thought that. Well, I mean, it's I mean, st I mean, it's no different than I mean, I'm sure you've heard the if you leave a uh, bottle of water in your car um, and it's been out in the heat and the sun and that kind of stuff, you're not supposed to drink that water because the plastic starts breaking down and gets absorbed into the water. So same kind of I mean, it's the same concept. Heat in general is bad for synthetic like plastics and that kind of stuff. <laughs> More notes. <laughs> Stacey's gonna be like, honey, get the condoms out of the fridge. No. <laughs> wait, cause like, oh, so wait a minute. <laughs> no, don't put condoms in the fridge. That'll be sad for him. No, I'm, first of all, I'm not even, what am I gonna, no, I'm not even there yet. <laughs> not even at sex. <laughs> um, so, cause like people, I've heard people using like ice cubes and stuff down there for sensation, but that's not for temperature control. That's no, that's just, for sensational yeah. that's, that's, that's a just sensation. like floor play stuff. Okay. Yeah, that's just floor play stuff. Okay, so um, my next question, are you ready? No. <laughs> um, the I next I Googles... showed back up at the right time. <laughs> yeah, right? The next Welcome Google, to dessert. Uh, the next Google question is, how long should sex last? Now, these numbers, I will say, are just the act of intercourse. It's not including foreplay. So, this is a great question, because number one, I don't know. Yeah. Number two, <laughs> do you remember the Missy Elliott song, Minute Man? Yes. I don't want a one minute man. So, so I was like, oh, but then when you talk to like some married couple, like, so first of all, like you hear you don't want a minute man. And then you hear about like dudes like, oh, I could go all night long, blah, blah, blah. But then I talked to my married friends and they're just like, oh my gosh, like it went for forever. So I'm like, I don't know what- so, This is why I think you're gonna be interested in this. So, okay. Um, Dr. If I to take a random guess, I would say 17 minutes. I like it, I like, are you right? Okay. Um, Dr. Young, this, it says Dr. Young, take it away, but here we go. This varies greatly depending on the age of the participants as well as the amount of time and energy that they have available. 
Uh, but per a survey of sex therapists in 2008, too short was considered one to two minutes. Adequate was three to seven minutes. Desirable was seven to 13 minutes and too long is 30. So these guys that are out there going, oh yeah, baby, I can last for two hours. These women are going, please get off of me. <laughs> wow. So, and mind you, like foreplay should be a big part of it, but like I'm, I'm a hundred percent with this, like seven to 13 minutes. You give me like a good 10 to 11 minutes of like good loving. I am a happy camper. <laughs> yeah. Um, wow. Right. Also, there was that. Oh, this is fascinating. Wow. See, I'm, I'm utterly convinced that anybody that tries to play that, oh, I can go all night thing. Dude, there's something wrong with you. Like, right, right. Like it's in a pill. Yeah, no, or there's just there's just something wrong. No, there's something literally physiologically wrong with you that you are not getting enough sensation to your dick. Right. That you, can, you can no longer achieve orgasm. And there, there was are a girl who I worked with, and she was like, I flat out said that to her. I was like, Oh my god, like ten minutes, twelve minutes, I'm perfect. She goes, Oh no, me and my husband, we go for hours. And I was like, What do you? I was like, Yeah, but that's like foreplay and stuff. She goes, No, 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 no. We have sex four hours. I was like, don't your hips hurt? Like, aren't you done? Like it's eventually it's gonna not feel great. Yeah, goes, like, no, it, we can there's do gonna this. be chafing. Right. Like it's not like <laughs> you, you must go through all the loop. <laughs> oh, that's a solid point. Like, I'm like, my guys are going through it, but to think of that naturally <laughs> lubricated, eventually that's going to go away. So it's just, but yeah, she was like, no, it's amazing. And I was like, I feel like that's not and exactly what Dave said. It's like, okay, something's clearly wrong with something's wrong with this dick. He, you should not be having that little of. Um, anyway, so we need to keep going. Yeah, sensation. So um, the next question from Google is, how long can you get pregnant after unprotected sex? Say, ask that one more time. How long can you get pregnant after unprotected sex? Like, how, how long? long is the window? Oh. How long can sperm stay alive in, in your body, basically? I was like, yeah, there's, there's a much easier way to, answer, to ask that question. <laughs> but that's, I took it right off of the Googles. <laughs> the Google! <laughs> that's why we should have stuck with Ecosia. <laughs> <laughs> um, interesting. Well, I know what they have the, like, plan B, or, like the, or the day right. after pill. Mm -hmm. So my guess would be 24 hours? That's a good guess. I will say the plan B works for up to five days after you have unprotected sex. Um, if you have unprotected sex and are ovulating, um, conception probably takes place within 48 hours. But since your cervix stores sperm and releases it for about 48 hours after sex, you could potentially conceive four days after having sex with someone. Whoa. Right? Okay, this is just, I feel like you know this, but I, I added it because it was one of the questions. Can you get pregnant during your period? I didn't think that you could. No, you can't. You're <laughs> I was like, okay, I was like, oh my gosh. That's, that's not how that works. That's not how any of this works. Also, no. I, also, I've always thought sex during your period sounds like undesirable. I feel like it'd look like a murder scene. Honestly, I think it depends. I've definitely been in relationships where we've both been like, we needed that connection. So it just, you, you put down a towel and you head to a shower right after. I was going to say, or, I, say, or, I mean, or you just do it in the shower. That's or it. Or you just do it in the shower. Um, Interesting. This one guy I was dating, literally, he would like, he'd be like, look at my murder dick. <laughs> oh. So now here's, so are there things like that, that like in the moment you're like, oh my God, that's hilarious. That's kind of like yes. a little relationship yes. thing. And then after the fact, like, like years later, you're like, oh my God, let me tell you about this idiot that I used to. Yes. <laughs> because legitimately during the thing, it was so funny. And then now I'm like, what a moron. Like <laughs> Look at my murder dick. That's, that's amazing. That's what I'm like, that sounds, no. <laughs> All right. What'd you have... name your penis? Jack the Ripper. <laughs> <laughs> um, my one friend named his Jacques Cousteau because he was a deep sea diver. Goes to unexplored. Uh, that's, yeah, that's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's funny if you're a virgin. <laughs> <laughs> Stacy, do you think penis?
penis size matters? Hmm. Hmm. You know what? I've never thought about that. I Just so you know, the average flaccid penis is three and a half inches, and the average erect penis is five, between five and five and a half. Hmm. <laughs> wow. <laughs> You know, okay, let me, let me say this much because, um, full disclosure. So this dude that I was dating happened to have like what was considered a small penis. And so and they like, maybe like the size of like, like, My a, yeah, like a male thumb or something like that. And I remember, um, what I remember like because I was like oh I don't know how big they're supposed to be or anything like that and a friend of mine she was like oh well you know she's like well it's a good thing like that you're a virgin maybe it won't matter as much and I was like huh like if we were to go that route which we did not and it made me think I was like oh well maybe because like maybe if it's like for a woman if it's like tighter and hasn't done a whole lot maybe it wouldn't matter as much if it was small because it would be adaptable because technically it would be the biggest thing that's ever been in there but if you've been more active and you've had, let's say, you know, you've had sex with ones that were larger, like, and you've been, I don't know. I don't know. It just made me think about like, maybe it doesn't matter from my perspective. Keep in mind, but, you're talking about a body part that is designed to let a baby come out of it. So, I mean, right. there's, there's an elasticity factor there. <laughs> you better preach, Dave. <laughs> so this is what my, this is what my research says. Um, like anything, it may matter to some people, like being thin or having a nice car. Uh, <laughs> but depending on how much certain looks matter to an individual, penis size might be considered too big or too small. It certainly seems to matter to some men for bragging rights for the amount they trash talk uh, about it, but it may also matter for some men and women in terms of how a certain size feels during intercourse. Penis size doesn't matter in terms of ability to have an orgasm or being able to get a woman pregnant. <laughs> um, <laughs> the average women, woman's uh, vulva is four and a half to five inches long. So like anything more than that is actually like stretching it out. So it's made for the average dick. <laughs> is that what it would say on my Barbie box? <laughs> um, can you get pregnant in water? I'm sorry. Was did you, like was the was the whole point? Like, did you Google what frat boys tell girls? Like, is like is that is is are the like is can you leave your purse in his room overnight? Like, is that one of these questions? Like, is that code for something? <laughs> oh no, that was that was a that was a typical college fraternity guy move. Was oh no, dude, don't worry about your purse. Just put it in my room, and then you can get it later. And then you, you can get it later at the end of the night. And, and I got you. Don't worry about it. Because you know she's going to be hammered at the end of the Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, I feel like wherever you happen to get a penis inside of your vagina, it can ejaculate and you can get pregnant. <laughs> so, Stacey, you're very smart. The doctor answered, of course. All that has to happen is that sperm is deposited in the vagina where millions of them shoot up through the cervix and into the uterus and down the fallopian tubes looking for an egg. Water doesn't get into the vagina when you're in a pool or a tub. Think about when a woman gets out of a swimming pool. It's not like a torrent of water pours out of her <laughs> vagina. It's a, closed, it's a closed space, unless something opens it, like a penis. Now I did hear that you're not supposed to like have sex in like a hot tub or a pool. I mean, it does like open your body up to area like the this motions pushing stuff up so it can't be great um but <laughs> honestly the majority of that has to do with like if you have if you tend like if you have an allergy or an infection or like you know something like it's like a, a reaction like okay for example i've got a salt water pool or even with a normal pool you might not want chlorine getting up right. into a sensitive i mean if it bleaches out your hair right <laughs> <laughs> all right i have three more questions um can you get pregnant from pre-cum and my secondary question to that is do you know what pre-cum is 
I feel like I would have reversed the order of those questions. I would have. I, I didn't have the second part. I just realized she might not know what it is. <laughs> like, I've heard the term before, but I, that's it. I'm just like, oh, well, then what is it? Like, is it just without sperm? Like, yeah, I, exactly. Okay. It's kind of like the fluid going through the pipes before the actual goods come out. Like, it's, it's a, yeah. Does it come like <laughs> right before like the like the for the main event? I mean, it can no. happen like at any time during the beginning ish, you know? It's just kind of like priming the wheels. <laughs> Greasing the wheels for it's everything. W D forty. Yeah. So <laughs> look at <laughs> so this is what the doctor says. Um, current thinking is that a woman is unlikely to get pregnant from pre-cum since research suggests, suggests that there are no sperm in pre-ejaculate. It was thought in the past that there were sperm in pre-ejaculate according for according, accounting for the relatively high failure rate of the pull out and pray method. Um, it turns out there are likely not any sperm in the pre-ejaculate and what actually accounts for the relatively high failure of that method is that the man doesn't actually pull out. <laughs> Hmm. Interesting. Like, no, okay, well, now that I know. Yeah, or, is, or right. we always like to call it the spray and pray. Wow. Number one, like, what's prayer going to, I mean, listen, I'm a Christian. Yes, praying. But also, I'm like, <laughs> you know what you did. Uh, so, this is interesting. So, in terms of, okay, if that happens, the pre <laughs> so gross. Um, so, if that happens, so does it, well, let's ask a Dave. Um, like when that happens, like, do you know, oh, that was the pre and then like, like, is there a difference or is it all like, so it's like, it's like, it's like Chelsea was saying like that, that tends to happen earlier. And, and I assure you, yes, you know, the difference between that, which is more of a lubrication kind of thing to help aid in that process. Oh, that's fascinating. Um, as opposed to WD forty, the, uh, the it's exactly it's it's WD forty, not uh, yeah, it, yeah. That's amazing. Like God's a genius. Like he made he gave a he gave you the yeah. built in lube. Like yeah, it's, that it's is not. fascinating. Just, All right, we kind of we kind of touched on this earlier. <laughs> so <cute. laughs> Look at you. Also, Dave, um, I don't think I've ever made you laugh that hard before. <laughs> I'm sorry, WD-40 is going to be stuck in my head for a long, long time. That's that's that, <laughs> that's probably a line I'm going to use at some point. That's, uh, that's amazing. <laughs> no, don't worry about that, honey. That's just the WD-40. <laughs> <laughs> um, Stacy, do you know where the G-spot is? No. Neither oh, do most no. guys. Yeah, neither do most guys. That's very real. <laughs> All right, so this is um, this is the one answer I got from Maxim, which is aimed for guys. So you're welcome, male America. <laughs> <laughs> the G spot is a patch that's located around two to three inches inside the vagina on the front of the vaginal wall, meaning it's the side towards the stomach, not the butt. Mm -hmm. This is how you know it's for a guy. <laughs> this, <laughs> this patch feels Amber. slightly thicker, <laughs> rigid, and spongy. The best way to find it is with your fingers. So like if you inserted fingers and then made this motion, you would end up hitting the G spot. Oh, well that makes sense now. Yeah. So now that I see that movement and I see right. people make that gesture, now I, okay. Um, once you found it, you can assess how it feels. For some people, it's mind blowing. For others, not so much. Then you start experimenting. During intercourse, sticking a pillow under the woman's butt can help the penis hit the G spot during missionary. Or you can just use your finger in that come hither motion while also using your penis. Which is both at the same time? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> okay, my last and final question. What am I, Stretch Armstrong? I got you know what? <laughs> that's like that's a contortion. No, you either no. Nah. Like I'm shocked. That's no, I will say again. I will say there are toys that you can make that are actually very thin. That's and, and those are designed. Long, for that. Yep. That are designed to go in with a penis and just hit the G spot. Interesting. I yeah. did know about the hip thing because I do. 
I have a few friends, but that are like very. Yeah, just put a pillow under your hips. It's a good time. But there's like a, like what they bought. It's like a Ooh, triangular. A mm-hmm. shit. Yeah, and they're a like, wedge. yeah, it's for your hips, so it's at the right angles. Like, wow. The wedge. Yes, the wedge. For your wedge. Best, best wedgie <laughs> you've ever gotten. Um, Man. Last and final question: um, circumcised versus circ- versus uncircumcised. What's the difference? Oh, that's the um, foreskin. With the chips, Daisy. V cut or yes. turtleneck? Have you ever seen one? No, I have not. Me either. <laughs> um, actually, it's interesting because I think it said that in my research, it said thirty-six percent of the world has circumcised penises. Seventy-two percent of America does. So, and interestingly, like, so you've met Lauren uh, that does the uh, Tales from the Bar Side show with us. Mm-hmm. I guess. Uh, this topic came up one night during one of our late night dr- uh, drunken Zoom sessions. And she's actually been with more guys that are not circumcised than are. And she said, it, she's, like, I, she's, like, I, she's like, I don't know what it is. It just kind of worked out that way. Interesting. Because, like, so the reason for doing, I mean, number one, I knew there were, like, biblical reasons back in you know i knew there was that but also like doesn't it like remove like your chance of getting like bacteria or something yeah like that? that's the big thing it's hygienic and it yeah. was it was during like when there was well, people weren't different. showering every day that wasn't indoor that's, that's the it issue. was like yeah. say that again you could, you could uh, like before indoor plumbing people weren't showering every day so like you had you didn't you didn't have the means to like thoroughly clean that area so rather than have to move the skin back and clean that area you just cut off the skin and then nothing needs to move <laughs> oh yeah like in, but in but in today's world i mean it's it's not as right. big of an Everybody issue shouts, it's, so yeah it's not a big so, i mean it's, it's 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 like anything else as long as you keep it clean there's no issue a friend of mine just had well he just turned five but her son she, she didn't get him circumcised so she was like there's no real need to do it anymore right wow that's interesting right Oh, Daisy, did you learn a lot in our four-year anniversary? So much. <laughs> wow. So much. Yes. Wow. Listen, if we could, thank you guys so much for listening, for checking us out. Make sure you go on to iTunes or however you listen and rate and review us. We really appreciate it. Um, yeah. Four years. Four years. This is my most successful relationship. (laughs) Uh Uh-oh. And I I do. I I think it's funny that this whole thing started uh, because you were the the karaoke hostess that would tell hilarious stories about her dating life. And yeah. And it's funny because a month before that day, Chelsea and I were talking, of course, and laughing about something. I said, Chelsea, we are hilarious. We should have a podcast. A month later... Y'all walked into a bar, and I was like, it's like God knows. <laughs> right? Your words are powerful. <laughs> he sent the angels named Bob and Dave. <laughs> I, I'm fairly sure we we would not fall into that role. <laughs> you do for some people. I mean, te- I mean, technically speaking, Lucifer was an angel at one point. So. <laughs> you are not Lucifer, Dave. <laughs> but it is true. He was an angel. Absolutely. I mean, I, I got I, kicked out. I would be Tom Ellis. He's he's a he's a hot dude. He's I would I would be Tom Ellis. <laughs> oh my god! Right? Seriously, <laughs> seriously. I don't Lucifer, know who that is. The TV show Lucifer. It's on Netflix. Uh, you might you might be a little morally not great with it, but he's a good looking man. Honestly, he's got a lot of actually for what it's worth, people. I will say this. So as somebody who was raised Catholic, um, but then I escaped. Uh, <laughs> like it is a I won't say it's biblically accurate. But it no, is, but it is true thematically, like Ooh. you know, like so it's you know they bring in some of the other angels, uh, like Amenadiel, um, they you know the whole relationship with demons and and all that fun stuff and and like the true story of the Bible and Lucifer's rebellion and all that stuff. Um, wow! This next season that's coming up, season five, which I believe starts August twenty first. Type plug for Lucifer. Um, God is actually going to be a character in the show. Um, he had like a cameo in, in season three, I believe, but he's going to be like an actual recurring character in the show now. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's like, it's interesting to see their take on Lucifer's point of view of being Lucifer. 
interesting. Not mad. Stacy, you're great. <laughs> and hopefully someday I will be in bed. <laughs> You will. I'll help you. <laughs> Thank you. I was going to say, Chelsea, you're amazing. <laughs> Outside of it. Yeah. I was going to say, as you know, as a friend. <laughs> right. Right. What? <laughs> well, I love you, Chelsea. I love you. I love you too. Listen, yeah. That's Stacy. That's Chelsea. And this is Reasons Why I'm Single. We'll see y'all next week. Okay. Bye. Bye.